If you let it, this is how the learning curve of your entrepreneurial career can become your black hole. What is a learning curve? It's a person's rate of progress when learning new skills or new experiences. At the beginning of my entrepreneurial career, I came across countless obstacles um, in the pursuit of my early goals. So the thought of not having what it takes and quitting halfway through the process um, and, and just leaving my dreams aside became a normal train of thought. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how positive you are, I had put myself in a very, very hot spot and quitting was just simply not an option. So I had to endure the pains and the struggles of my entrepreneurial journey to get out of my survival mode. So what does that look like? Well, in my early 20s, I started playing with the notion to launch my first business. At the time, I had an established career as a firefighter, but the bottom line was that I was performing very well in an environment that went from zero to 100 within seconds. The thing about it was that I had never operated without any type of guidance. So I was doing really good for a 20 year old kid because there was always people that I could turn to for guidance and advice and they were super close to me. They had a ton of experience, they were readily available, and they were vested in my success, right? They were my captains, they were the people that had been in the fire department for years, and I was a, I was a boot, I was a newbie. So the fire family took me under their wing and started training me, making that learning curve a lot easier to bear. So now we take that and fast forward a couple of years um, to the beginning of my first business uh, venture, and, and the story along with my confidence levels just completely changed. I mean, it changed dramatically. During my first year as an entrepreneur, I went from the person who I thought I was, confident, skilled, and super focused, to a total mess on all fronts. And I mean total mess. I switched gears from a structured environment, from a firehouse environment where you have support, where you have training, where you have standard operating procedures, to entrepreneurship and creating my own ball of wax. Uh, building my own company with nothing really to stand on. So I went from a lot of support to no support, knowing what the industry was to not knowing at all what, the, what I could expect as an entrepreneur. And that completely rocked my world. So the truth is that I was not ready for the business world or the reality that comes along with being a bootstrap entrepreneur. The pressure of leaving the fire department, leaving everything I knew, and starting something from scratch along with personal problems and mindset issues and a whole new set of financial responsibilities piling up just added up super quick. Long story short, the combination of that whole perfect storm had me hitting rock bottom financially, mentally, emotionally, and just about every other type of illy that you can think of um, six months into my 24th birthday. So as I sat there and looked at my future, it just looked dark, it looked hopeless, and it looked like I had nowhere to turn. And if you've been a serious entrepreneur for at least three months, you probably know what I'm talking about. So the big difference and the catalyst here for all those emotions was that I had no one to talk me through the process or walk me through the pitfalls of building my own business. No one who coached me through the emotional ups and downs of what it takes when you start betting on yourself. And worst of all, I just flat out did not know how to manage the transition of this new stage that I was tapping into. I was proficient in my previous profession, so I thought that would automatically translate over to the new one, and it just didn't. And I couldn't register that. My thought process wasn't ready for that. I was not wired psychologically for that. And I was just not aware of how I could manage it. So it literally felt like I was falling into a black hole, right? So now I call that the, the learning curve black hole. Uh, the operating system at the firehouse made that particular learning curve easy to bear. I had support in all fronts, emotionally, professionally, strategically. So they pretty much walked me through the process and made it simple. However, entrepreneurship is completely different. I had no foundation to stand on. Previous profession, the road was already paved. As an entrepreneur, I was paving my own way through it. And it can be somewhat hard to register that and become aware that it's a transition. So how is all of this relevant? Well, by default, venturing out on your own is paving your own way. It doesn't matter if you're starting a franchise or a model that already exists, your experience as an entrepreneur is gonna be different than the next person's. 
because of your collection of memories, because of the way that you process information, because of the way that you see the world, your experience is gonna be yours only. And as entrepreneurs, we don't always have the signs that we can just look at and follow, right? And if you let it, the learning curve of entrepreneurship can be a black hole that just never lets you out. You have to be aware where you stand and what part of that cycle you're in. And it can very well dictate the difference between quitting what you're trying to do as an entrepreneur or going back to a nine to five. So with all that being said, the way that I see it, there are four stages in every learning curve. So become aware of each one of them. It's gonna be the first step. And then think about where you find yourself in that curve. So you can learn to recognize where you stand and also you can learn to recognize what comes ahead of that. So the stage one is gonna be where you're sitting there and you're being unconsciously incompetent. You're jumping into something, which is exactly what happened to me. I jumped into a new field and I thought I had it, uh, I had it done because I had that sense of confidence and that focus that came with my previous history, right? Uh, but I jumped into, uh, into a new field and I, th I wasn't consciously incompetent. So meaning that I didn't know that I was not good at, uh, at this new venture. So stage one, you're unconsciously incompetent, but at the end of the day, your skills and proficiency is gonna come through applied action. So during the unconsciously incompetent stage, you don't have the skills that you think you have. And you may come into it with high levels of confidence and hit a wall. So in a nutshell, you suck at this new venture. You just don't know that you suck. And this is perfectly okay because everybody goes through this period of adaptation. Think of the unconsciously incompetent phase as the righteous path to transitioning to something new. Now, you're past that, you move on to stage two, and then what happens is that you become consciously incompetent. So it hits you over the head, right? Man, I suck. This is not for me. I am totally in the wrong business. I'm doing the wrong stuff. Uh, it's not for me. I'm, I'm, everybody is doing so great around me, but not me. Really what happens here, it, it's gonna be almost a mixture of a, a psychological crisis because you're thinking, and then you, have, you may have this image of yourself where you're confident and focused and have all that stuff going on, yet you come into this new area and you're not getting the results that you thought you were gonna get right out of the gate. So that's just stage two, that's all it is. It's consciously incompetent, so it hits you, it lands. So you still suck, but now you're aware of that. So you know that you suck at whatever it is that you're doing. Now, here's a great thing about it. Being aware is the first step for growth. If you have no idea what your areas of improvement are, there's no way you can improve. Simple as that. So this is where you can actually start diving into it and dissecting yourself, dissecting your actions, dissecting your results in everything, leadership style, business practices, relationship building, networking, lead generation, whatever that might be. I mean, you understand it, now you're aware of it, now you can take it and own it and actually start applying and improving day after day. So when this lands, just use this realization, challenge yourself and focus on becoming a better version of you. So what happens after that? It's actually pretty interesting. Good thing you ask. You move on to phase three. Phase three, we start seeing light at the end of the tunnel. This is where you become unconsciously competent. So after a period of trial and error, inevitably you're gonna start walking towards a direction where you start to see a resemblance of the results that you want. Here's the thing, repetition is the key to mastery and in business, it's no different. Any person who has spent a good amount of time in uh, negotiations or sales or any particular area can tell you that repetition improves the way that you operate. And this is no different. So you still have that stigma, right? Uh, that, uh, oh my God, I don't have the results that everybody around me has and, and I suck at this. And you start operating under that premise for a while, for a while, for a while, but then the next thing that happens is that something clicks and you get a taste of those results that you're looking for. Maybe you close a deal or your sales revenue goes up. So you will start to see those good results happen where poor results were the usual. At this point, you have to rebuild your confidence and your focus. So your confidence levels may not be that high yet, but they're gonna start stacking up again and you're gonna level up to that space. And again, building your confidence up also takes time. It's part of that new learning curve. So what's happening here in phase three is that you don't suck anymore, but you still think that you suck. <laughs> and here's a funny thing. It's not an uncommon thing to have other people notice your improvement before you do. So the unconsciously competent phase lasts a while, and then after that, it's gonna hit you. You're gonna move on to phase four, which is your consciously competent phase. 
So after spending enough time in constant repetition and practice and trial and error and fixing your tweaks and focusing on the areas that you can improve, you're gonna begin to acknowledge your improved performance. And then those great results are not gonna be just one-offs, they are gonna become a standard for you. And this is, this is where it gets you know, even more interesting because your, your newfound confidence in this area is gonna start to fuel new fires for growth, for achievement, for reach, or it can't be tempting enough to make you fall into a comfort zone in this new field that you're in. So watch out for that. But at this point, you feel like you own the environment that you're sitting in. You feel like you're fish in water at this point. So your skill set, your performance, your leadership, and business acumen, I mean, they're well developed by now. And your emotional intelligence in this learning curve is controlled. So you don't freak out like you used to at the beginning when something new happens or a new challenge arises. Being consciously competent comes from a space of confidence in your results. So there you have it. Those are the four stages of the entrepreneur's black hole, which is the entrepreneur's learning curve. So the recap on this is stage one, you're unconsciously incompetent. So you suck. You just don't know that you suck. You go through that and move on to stage two, which is consciously incompetent. This is when it hits you and you know that you still suck and you got a lot of work to do and growth begins to happen. Stage three, you become unconsciously competent. You don't suck so much anymore, but you're not aware of it. You're not comfortable with it yet. Magic happens at stage four where you're consciously competent. So now you feel like you're fish in water. You understand what you're doing. Your skills have been refined. Your business acumen is higher. You can operate freely in whatever environment you are for that particular learning curve. So there you guys have it. Stay tuned, stay focused. You got this.